Okay, so more about permeability of soils. So for clay soils, you have fewer air voids and less capability to transfer water. So therefore, they have lower permeability. Now, Table 35.11 has the typical coefficient of permeability in centimeters per second uh, as for group symbol. So you can see, remember the group symbols? G is gravel, S is sand, M is silt, uh, C is clay, and O is organic. So you can see as they go down, the particle, these are the... Uh, decreased particle sizes. So as you're going down, the smaller the particle sizes, the lower the permeability. So note that the number goes up, but the, also the exponent times 10 to the negative goes up as well. So that's, so don't get confused by that. Because it's all of, they're very small numbers. You're not transmitting much of uh, water through these, through the soil. Okay, whereas the gravel has larger voids and the higher capability to transfer water. So therefore, it's got the higher permeability. And you can see the well graded gravel transfers the highest because you have the most um, well graded, fairly clean. You have the most air voids, the most connected air voids. So that's why you have landfill liners are made from clay with low permeability, while gravelly soils are used where high permeability is desired, such as draining water away from structures. So impermeability implies constant voids in the soil sample and not just the presence of voids in the soil. So all permeable soils will have relatively large void ratios, but not all soils with large void ratios will be permeable. And remember, we talked about the porosity is the ratio of the volume of voids to the total volume, and that void ratio is the volume of voids to the volume of solids. That it's the ratio of the, vol uh, the, the free space over the filled space. Okay, so let's talk about different types of tests to uh, measure permeability of soils. So we have most common lab methods are what's called the falling head and the constant head test, and it's only uh, broken out based on the type of soil. So for coarse grain soil, you have the constant head test. And for fine grained soils, clay and silts, you have the falling head test. And that's for your less permeable soils. So the constant head test measures the volume of water V so the volume of water percolating through the soil over time. whereas the falling head test measures the change in head over time as the water percolates through the soil. That's why they call it the, the falling head test versus the constant head test. Okay, so here's a, a schematic of the two different tests. The constant head test, you have a constant ele a water elevation, and then you have the um, falling head test. Usually you'll have uh, uh, an H1 and a, uh, a delta H an HI and an HF. Okay, so here's the two equations. You have here for a constant head test, you have the volume. So that's the volume of water. Then you have the length of that soil sample here over the H, the delta H between the uh, start and the end, and then you have your area of your um, cross-sectional area of the specimen. Note that these are usually cylinders. So it's usually, a, a, it, it's, it's, it's almost always going to be a circular area, so pi times pi d squared over 4. They're usually going to give you the diameter. And then you have time. It's the time uh, that the uh, duration of the water collection. Now, the time is often decided first, and the corresponding volume is measured afterwards. So that's for your constant head. For the falling head test, you have two different areas, and you have an initial head and a final head. Okay? So essentially, this would be your HI, and then at some point after when the test is done, you have your final head.
and K, K is the permeability. Okay, so A prime is your um, cross-sectional area of, of the specimen. Sorry, no, that's the standpipe. This is your standpipe. And so this is sometimes, um, that permeability is usually in, 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 it's in inches, it's in length per time, usually in centimeters per second. So you have your initial head, your final head, length of the specimen still, time to, to duration of the water collection. Sometimes they'll give you an initial time and a final time. Uh, area of the specimen, same thing, it's, it's going to be cylindrical. And then A prime is your standpipe. It's usually a smaller diameter. Now sometimes this is referred to as little a and, and capital A, um, or H1 and H0, H0, or uh, as opposed to a initial head and final head. Okay, so let's go through a quick example. Most of the time, uh, you're going to get, if you get a problem like this on the uh, on permeability on the exam, one of these tests is going to be fairly straightforward. It's just plugging and chugging into the equation. It's not always asked, you're not always going to be asked to solve for um, the permeability. Sometimes you're going to be asked to back solve for another parameter like the time or the volume. Okay, so this says a constant head permeability test is run on a compacted sample of sand. Sample is 100 mil, 180 millimeters long. So let's start writing out what these are, what we're given. This is our length. The diameter of the mold is 90 millimeters, so that's our uh, diameter of A. Use that in quotes. Say in 90 seconds, the discharge volume under a constant head of 38 centimeters is 507 centimeters cubed. So they told us the time. Constant head, so this is the, the delta H essentially. Or in this case, usually it's just referred to as H. And then they gave us the total volume, 507 centimeter cubed of water. So they say, most nearly, what is the coefficient of permeability of the sand? So permeability and coefficient of permeability uh, also uh, is, is essentially used interchangeably. So the answer is in centimeters per second, and for the most part, the units mostly line up. So this is a direct application of the constant head method. Um, note that the constant head test should have K greater than 10 to the negative 3. centimeters per second, but that's not always going to be the case. So I would still just go through. So ideally, you could uh, just cross off C and D, but I would still go through the problem, even if you can cross off all three. OK, so let's go through this. They gave us the diameter, 90, uh, 90 millimeters. In this case, we're converting 90 millimeters to centimeters so that we all have the same units of, of centimeters. So we say pi times the diameter squared over four using centimeters. So we get the, the area of our uh, sample was is 63.6 .6 centimeters squared. And then we go from there to solve the equation. Coefficient of permeability is just the volume times the length over HAT. Volume was given 507 cubic centimeters. Don't have to change the units. Length was given as 18 centimeters. All right. So length was given as 180 millimeters. So once again, we got to convert that to centimeters to be consistent. And then the height was given as 38 centimeters. Area, we calculated, and the time was 90 seconds. So if you work out the units, it comes out to centimeters per second. If you solve, you get 0 0.042 centimeters per second. So the answer would be... A. Um, and going back, the reason why we can say that um, I said you, you, you can't automatically 
um, cross them off, but it is usually the case that constant head permeability tests is only run on sands that have permeability greater than 10 to the negative 3 centimeters per second. So the, I, the, the hunch is that you won't, that these two are going to be your only options. These would be on the order of fine grain and therefore you would be using the falling head permeability test. Note that the centimeters per second is a very common unit for permeability. Uh, they could ask you for millimeters per second or even inches per second, but they're not as common. 